Thank you, Tim. And uh, I'm sure, uh, given that description, the audience will be familiar. If we can just go to the first slide. <clears throat> um, the business is presented to our customer base as an integrated port-to-door model. And I think the, uh, the industry could be described as mature. Some might say old-fashioned, but uh, we prefer mature. Um, it's still highly fragmented. And uh, that is where we see our growth. Clearly, our advantage that we take to the market is in this integrated model supported with the technology layer that allows us to give our clients visibility through a single portal across that, uh, that supply line that we're servicing our customers with. We've got a very experienced board and management team in place. We continue to expand the business. And as you can see there, we've got a strategic plan that has clearly targeted over the next three to five years to grow this business to at least a billion dollar revenue and appropriate returns. If we just go to the next slide, <clears throat> uh, we've got 50 sites now operating across the country, so we're continuing to grow the business. Each site stands alone with its own P&L with minimum thresholds of performance, and we think this is a really key aspect of allowing us to maintain what is a laser-like focus on our performance with each of those site managers. Um, as you touched on, Tim, we offer our customers that time-certain delivery model. Those segments that we've got listed on the right-hand side uh, of the slide have proven uh, in the early days of our, of our management buyout, certainly uh, recession-proof, uh, subsequently COVID-resilient, and we're hoping as we head into some softer uh, trading conditions more broadly, that that customer base will continue to stand us in very good stead. As you can see, we have a, uh, a long-term relationship across the board with our customers, uh, and they, uh, they retain with us their business based on our ability to continue to service what we do, and I think the share of wallet that we continue to grow with those customers is a really strong endorsement of the business model that we're bringing to the market. We just go to the next slide, thank you. Uh, just in terms of the half year just completed, um, certainly been some challenges. Uh, and that's really been a continuation of what all businesses have endured in recent times, but labor shortages uh, in our industry, supply chain congestion has been a key issue. Uh, property cost escalating, uh, shortages of MHE vehicles and parts, uh, and of course the other topical uh, question in our business of pallets across the industry. Uh, but against that backdrop, the business has delivered what we think is an outstanding result: 39% revenue growth year on year, EBIT growth of almost 35%, uh, really strong cash flows and generations, uh, and all of that supporting what we think is a uh, is a very strong first half dividend to our shareholders. If we just jump to the next slide, <clears throat> I think it's important to note for the audience, um, we outlined in our FY22 full year result presentation, how would we, how we would be continuing to invest in that three to five year strategic plan to grow the business towards the billion dollar revenue target. And I think it's pleasing from our perspective that despite commencing that investment in significant proportions in this half, we have managed to deliver the result we have. Um, some key metrics, obviously, our, our warehouse performance uh, continues to uh, be strong off the back of very strong utilisation. I'll talk a little bit later about what the outlook like that looks like for that uh, space. Port volumes have continued to grow, albeit we will see some softening in this half. But against that, our warehouse revenues and distribution revenues have really grown strongly. I think one of the most pleasing things, and this is a really important uh, aspect in this business, but our strategic why is really to make it easy for our customers to do their business. And how that plays out for us is we've achieved contract renewals of $83 million in the half, which gives our, uh, our contracted forward revenue uh, tenure up to $377 million, which is up 13% on the prior calendar period. In terms of 
that proposition we're taking to the market, the service certainty that we're giving our customers, um, that's really underpinned our ability to continue to win market share and $34 million of annualised new revenues in the half is a significant result and well up on the prior period. But the organic growth is only part of our strategic growth plans. And clearly the acquisitions that we're continuing to make will be a feature of our strategic plan. Um, in this particular period, the 101 and FFS transactions have been integrated. And really importantly, they are both trading ahead of uh, business plan targets that we put in place when we acquired those businesses. I think it's important to note as part of that investment, Tim, in our future, uh, we've internalised our own corporate development capability, uh, which is really focused on those m and opportunities uh, that I've spoken to. And we have a well-qualified list of targets engaged in processes. The other critical achievements during the period, um, as you mentioned in your opening, safety is an absolute uh, feature of this business. It's, it dominates every management conversation. It's the first thing we speak about. And we continue to see that with the reductions in our TRIFA rates across the business. Importantly, in the current environment, cybersecurity uh, is ever present. Uh, we're now compliant to the government's essential aid program and we continue to invest in that space. Uh, and probably most importantly for me, in terms of the culture and the, and the buy-in of our people, we were really pleased to launch our employee share plan, where we welcomed 432 new shareholders, employees, to the register in the half. And that's a, uh, an initiative we wish to continue as we go forward. Um, last but not least, uh, ESG is... Uh, front and centre with our senior team. Uh, the first half saw good progress in establishing uh, our baseline. Uh, we've now finalised that report and we expect to be sitting externally with our investor base and stakeholders, our first key reduction targets in our next half update. In summary, a really successful start to 23. Um, the business is stable. Uh, it continues to focus on safety, deliver on its results and carefully manages costs through a really disciplined yield program, which again in this industry has been and will continue to be very critical to the profitability of this business. Concurrently, we've invested in some really exciting new property developments. We've opened uh, in this half a new site at Tarnit for Sealed Air Cryovac, a global company, on a seven-year contract. And we've got sites at Kemp's Creek and Kenwick on boarding in the next 12 to 18 months, which gives us not only $85,000 of new capacity, it gives us a significant opportunity to now go to the next phase of automation uh, in terms of uh, our business model going forward. So a really strong half and a, and a number of critical achievements. Just in terms of some detail on the financials, next slide, thank you. Um, Revenue at 254, up 39% is, is significant result for us. Um, we've had strong growth organically to support that. Uh, the EBIT at 19.7, up 35%, and underlying impact up 32%. Uh, a really pleasing set of numbers in a challenging environment. We close the period with 34 million in cash. Our corporate debt is at 26 million. Uh, so we're very comfortable in that regard. Uh, and clearly, uh, the dividend was paid out or will be paid out at the end of this month. Um, that has allowed us to continue to invest, and that's the key message. Corporate development, business development resources, new sites, automation, uh, and continuing investment in our technology platform are all important, important planks in our three- to five-year strategy. Next slide. Thank you. I just wanted to touch here a little bit, Tim, and uh, uh, we, we've spoken to it briefly, but we have a board-endorsed three- to five-year plan. Uh, it's gone through a, a rigorous debate and uh, discussion internally, but we've clearly set our targets on driving this big business towards a billion dollars of revenue as a minimum. Underpinning that focus, 
is our ability to provide those high quality services to customers on that port to door basis in what is a really fragmented market uh, and a market that will continue to come under duress uh, in terms of the smaller players and their ability to manage the variety of pressures facing their business, be it ESG, be it parts, be it labour. Um, we've got five key pillars uh, underpinning that. Uh, and the first of those is clearly that market leading customer experience. I cannot stress clearly enough. Our key point of difference in this market is our ability to continually execute that service promise, provide the data, the analytics and the visibility to our customers around delivering that and doing that time after time. The second key uh, pillar here is just leveraging that integrated offer, our share of wallet opportunity. So that share of wallet from existing customers is still above $110 million of revenue. The old saying, the customer you have is the easiest one to grow is absolutely appropriate in this business. But equally, we're going to continue to look at value add services and sectors, our M&A, will be focused on you know, expanding that value add aspect to our business uh, and really looking to scale up in those areas where we're still subscale. And then looking at our networking capability, um, 50 sites nationally, we need further capacity pretty much across the country in both warehousing and distribution. So we're really confident that we can uh, continue to expand that. Our people, our tech, our M&A and our ESG will all be key parts of what we're looking to do here. Thank you. Next slide. Uh, just to close out, uh, we have a level of confidence in what we do in the business. Uh, and as such, we've issued as part of our half year earnings guidance. Uh, and despite some of those challenges that I've talked to in terms of softening consumer demand, interest rates continuing to increase property shortages, people shortages, and equipment shortages remaining, um, we are confident that our business is robust enough to have issued the guidance. But alongside of that, we will continue to invest in that three to five year plan that I've just described. So Tim, I might just pause there uh, and uh, open to questions, please. Thanks, Brendan. Um, a, a fascinating uh emergence from COVID for, for your business. I mean, you've had some challenges. You've got COVID, supply chain issues, uh, you've got rising interest rates, and obviously um, some other issues in, in regards to input costs. What, what have been the key learnings from all of this, given your strong result? Well, Tim, we have uh, heard this uh, saying before, but we started life asset light. Uh, we've morphed into what we call an asset right type strategy. And the fundamental for that is having enough lever, levers in our variable costs to be able to manage the volume fluctuations that have occurred through COVID and will continue to occur, particularly you know, in the next three to six months as inventory cha supply chains start to right size from what's been an incredibly overstocked position in the last 12 months. So I think key for us is to maintain that balance between fixed and variable cost in our network and have the ability to pull those levers. And, and you've recently seen a uh, question here in uh, the collapse of Scott's refriger refrigeration uh, logistics. Uh, is, is that something that's, uh, is, is that an opportunity for you? Would that impact you in any way? Look, it doesn't. I just, I, I refer the, the audience team back to that slide that had the, uh, the customer segments on them. Um, we have deliberately chosen not to deal with the large retail grocery and or uh, you know, FMCGs, the Bunnings, the Car Targets, the Kmarts, um, they're not a customer segment that we think fit our model. We prefer to work closely with our customers, providing value and, and service certainty and then charging accordingly. Uh, so, no, we don't see opportunity in Scots. I think it just reinforces the thinking that we came into this business with when we acquired it by an MBO. And, and there's a question here, um, kind of profit is growing slower than revenue. Can you please explain the, the drivers of this? Is it kind of 
customer pricing not keeping up with cost? Where, where's the kind of imbalance there? Yeah, look, I think the really important message is the investment that we've made in our corporate development and business development functions with a view to that three to five year growth strategy is really the delta. If I normalise our internal cost of corporate development out of the result, our earnings are like for like at a percentage level with the prior period. Um, historically, corporate development, external corporate advisors has been a cost we've normalised out with an acquisition. We're now wearing that cost internally. Uh, and as I said, it, it balances the books without even taking into account the additional headcount that we've brought into our business development function to really sell ahead of the 85,000 square metres of, of capacity we're bringing on next year. And, and you've got a $1 billion revenue target. Obviously, M&A has to play a role in that. Um, is, is technology a, a challenge or an opportunity in, in your space, given you're trying to consolidate a fragmented industry, I, I think you mentioned, but technology can also be a challenge uh, as well as an opportunity? Yeah, look, absolutely. The tech uh, is where we invest most of our, our dollars uh, in terms of CapEx, uh, and it really is the difference between a well-integrated supply chain and service model vis-a-vis what our competitors are doing. And and we see that as a critical point of difference. One of the first things we do when we look at an acquisition is what tech they've got and then how we might migrate that into our platform Uh, so we're giving their customers the same that we're providing our customers, that end-to-end visibility, that data and analytic capability. Uh, It's a critical part, Tim, of what we're doing, a critical part of why we think we're different. And and just finally, if we can finish up, where, where do you see the, the key drivers of your, your revenue moving forward in terms of breakdown? Uh, in terms of M&A, the organic? Oh, just, yeah, that's that's a good way to put it. Yeah, look, we will, we will win $60-odd million of annualised new revenue this year, um, and that's, that's a, a stunning result by Sooty and his team. We expect to continue to grow the business really strongly organically. So if I said 500 is where we finish this year, three years we want another 500, you could uh, assume that I think 150 of that will be in organic and the balance is going to be in acquisition. 